Hi guys, welcome back to Caterpillar Cross Stitch. My name is Sean and welcome to part two of the cross stitch in school. Today we are going to be putting that first stitch into our bookmarks and we're going to be learning two methods on cross stitching, the English method and the Danish method along with some really helpful tips to help you on your cross stitching journey. If you're new to the cross stitching school then we would encourage you to go and watch part one and then join us here for part two to ensure that you don't miss out on any key information to help you as a beginner. Now Sally, the owner and designer of Caterpillar Cross Stitch has designed a brand new design specifically for the cross stitching school and over the next couple of weeks we're going to be teaching you how to stitch it and also how to fully finish it into a bookmark. Now to get your hands on this design which is completely free, all you need to do is sign up to the VIP Stitch Club and you will receive a notification with a link to gain access to all the free designs that Sally has created available for everyone to stitch. There is also a supply pack which provides you with all of the cross stitch materials you need and you can purchase them over on the Caterpillar Cross Stitch website. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is our thread and getting it all prepared ready for stitching. If you have purchased the supply pack then your threads will have come pre-cut perfect for the length that we need to use for stitching. So we're going to be taking a look at how we get our threads from the skein to the perfect length that we need for stitching. So if we take our skein, so this is a DMC skein in the colour 300 and we're going to take the thread from this side of our skein, so the, the side that has the unique number. So what we're going to look for is we're going to look for the end piece of thread which is here. We're going to hold the skein in our left hand and we're going to remove the thread from the skein. So using my right hand I'm going to pull gently on this thread, keeping a little bit of tension in my left hand. I'm going to pull until I feel the, feel the thread release from the skein. And I'm going to do that again two more times. So that was the first time. Keep going until you feel it release. That is the second time. One more time. And that is the third time. And you'll find that that is a really good length to work with when using the loop method. Now there is another way to determine the perfect length and that is to use the top of your fingertip to the, your elbow. So you can use the top of your finger and run the length of your arm with the thread to your elbow. And that can also be a really good length for you to work with and if you are using the loop method then you do need twice the length so all you need to do is do it twice and then you have the perfect length. So we're going to put this to a side as this colour is not what we're going to be using for our piece. We're going to bring back our threads from the supply pack and we're going to have a look to see what we're going to be starting with first and how many strands we need. On the important information area of our pattern, Sally has said that you will need the thread colours and lengths shown in the table on the next page. Please use only two strands of thread to stitch with. So if I take one of the strands to use as an example, there are six individual strands that make up a strand of thread. So there are six individual strands that make up this thread. So following what the pattern says, we need to use two strands of thread. Which colour do we need to start with first? So if we take the pattern, we are going to be starting top left of the pattern so we need this symbol here. So if we take our colour key, we need to stitch with 3607, which is the plum light. So that is this gorgeous plum colour here. 
So now that we know which colour to start with, I'm going to take the pattern and I'm just going to move it to a side because I'm now going to show you how to remove a strand from the thread. Very similar to removing our thread from the skein, we're going to separate the strands, the six strands that we have. We're going to pinch one of them with our right hand and we're going to keep our left hand pinching on the rest of the thread. Now we don't want to pinch too hard so that we can't move our strand out. We're just going to put a little bit of pressure and we're going to pull with our right hand and you'll see that the thread will start together. And we're going to keep pulling until all the strand has come out of the thread. Keep pulling and then as it releases you'll see that the strand can now be put back to normal. So there you go, just run your hands over the strand and you can see that it's now back to its normal form. So we now have one piece of strand. Now the pattern says that we need two strands but because we're using the loop method I'm going to take the two ends of my one strand and I'm going to put them together and then that will then mean that I have two strands of thread. So now that we have our two strands we're now going to start our first stitch. Before we start our first stitch in our book worm I wanted to share with you another way in which you can determine where to start in your pattern. Now we're going to be starting in the top left but I wanted to share with you another method. Now in part one I mentioned these red lines and that where they crossed was the centre of the design. So if we take a piece of fabric and we assume that this piece of fabric is the perfect length for a pattern that we are trying to decide where to start with. If we fold the, the, the fabric in half and we fold it again and press on the edges where we have folded, that will then create the lines that we can see in our pattern. So if you have a pattern which has the centre line, horizontal and vertical and you have the perfect size fabric, you can fold it in half and fold it again and then where the lines meet on your fabric, that is the centre point of the design. So you can start your pattern in the centre point. So if we were using our pattern, you could start here in the middle and that is a really good method to get you started with stitching. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to thread my needle. So I'm going to take my length of thread which has been folded in half and I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to push my thread into the, the eye of the needle. Now I find just twisting the thread can quite often help to flatten the thread, making it easy for me to push the needle onto the thread. I'm going to leave a couple of inches overlay of the thread and then we should be good to go. So we now have our thread ready to go, we have our fabric and our pattern and we know what colour we're going to be stitching with because we're going to be stitching this plum square here, so we're going to be stitching with this lovely plum colour. We now need to determine where we're going to stitch on our fabric. So if we take our template or we take a ruler, we can also use a ruler, I'm going to try and centre this in the middle of my band. Now because I'm using the band, we don't need to worry about the edging because the edging's already complete and is finished because we're using a Zweigart band. So we just need to make sure that we have a nice equal amount on either sides of the template. Now if you are stitching on your own fabric, you just need to make sure that you leave an inch on all sides of your bookmark. So wherever you start, you need to make sure there's an inch on either side of where you start. Now if we take 
the example stitched by Sally, you can see that there is one square and a half from where the band, the edging of the band is. So if you can see, there is one full square and then half a square and then the edging starts. So we need to make sure that we leave half a square, then the square, and we need to start here. I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to stitch as close to the edge of my template through the top of the square. And then I'm going to pull my thread through and I'm going to leave a couple of inches on the back where the loop is. And then I'm going to go back down with my thread, with my needle in the diagonal bottom square. So we've come up in the top left of the square and then I'm, I've gone back down in the bottom right square. And I'm going to, oh, so I'm going to push my needle through and I'm going to push the thread until it sits nice and flat on the fabric. Then I'm going to turn my band over, I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to push my needle through the loop until it catches it and then I'm going to pull my thread until the thread is secure and in place. So as you can see, we've now pulled the thread and that is now anchored our thread in place. Now you don't want to pull too hard, you just want to pull until you feel a little bit of resistance on the thread. So we've now created a half stitch. So that is the bottom leg of our stitch. So I'm going to come back up in the top right and I'm going to pull the thread through and I'm going to cross over this bottom leg into the bottom left of the square. I'm going to push my needle through and I'm going to pull it until we feel that resistance on our thread. And that is our first stitch complete. So we now have our first stitch. If we take our pattern, so I'm just going to move this to the side. If we have a look at our pattern, we need to count how many stitches there are using this symbol in this colour. So each square is made up of 10 by 10. So we're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there are 7 in total stitches that we need to achieve on our pattern. So we're going to take our fabric and the method we're using is called the English method. So this is a method where you complete each stitch as you go. Now the important thing to note is that you need to make sure that your stitches all run the same way. So because my bottom stitch runs this way diagonally, and my top stitch runs this way diagonally, we need to make sure that we continue in that way. Now you can stitch either way, so you can stitch left to right first, or you can stitch right to left, but you can do it either way depending on your own personal preference. So because my bottom stitch has gone from the top left to the bottom right, I am going to push my needle into this top left square in the next square, then I'm going to push my needle into the bottom right square, then I'm going to come up in the top right of the square, then I'm going to cross over into this bottom left and pull my thread through. So as you can see, my bottom thread runs from the top left to the bottom right, top left to the bottom right, and my top stitch runs from top right to bottom left, top right to bottom left. So it's really important that you continue to ensure that your top stitch runs the same way throughout your pattern. 
So we need to do this seven more times. So we're on the last stitch. So there we have our first seven stitches which matches our pattern. So now that we've completed our seven stitches here on our bookmark, we're now going to jump to the next line. So we're going to stitch these letters in part three. So we now need to jump to this line here. So we need to end our thread because that is quite a distance to travel with our thread. So to do that, we're going to take our bookmark and we're going to run our thread along the back of our stitches that we've already stitched. So I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to run the needle under about four or five stitches. It's going to run our needle in the back and then pull the thread through. Then we're going to take our scissors and we're going to cut the thread. And then we have a nice neat back and our nice seven stitches in place. So the next method I'm going to show you to start your stitching with is the knot method. So this is another method that you can use. Now we already have our two strands and so all we need to do is put a knot on the end of our of our thread as that is then going to anchor the thread as we pull the strands through. So I'm going to wrap the thread around my finger and then I'm going to push the tail through the middle of the through the middle of the loop and then I'm going to create the knot. And I'm going to do that two times. So wrap around the finger, push it through the through the loop and tie the knot. This is called the knot method and we need to now determine how many stitches we need to count to get to this next stitch. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The ninth stitch is where we're going to stitch. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm going to put my needle in the top left of the ninth square. Okay. Then I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to put, place it right next to the needle to allow me to take the needle back out and it, I can use my finger as a guide for where, my, where the hole was, where my needle was. So I'm going to pull my thread through and then I'm going to double check that I have got eight stitches empty up to the thread. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so then that is correct. So I'm going to go back down in the right, bottom right hole to create the half stitch. And I'm just going to make sure that I have pulled my thread completely through and this knot has now anchored the thread in place. So we started our stitching with the English method. So I'm now going to show you the Danish method. And the Danish method is where you stitch the bottom leg of your stitch and then you come backwards and put the top leg of your stitch. Okay, so what I mean by that is I'm going to continue to stitch from the top left to the bottom right of the stitches. So the Danish method means that you complete your bottom leg of stitches and then you go back over with your top stitch. So I'm going to keep stitching. Before we continue with our Danish method of stitching, we need to have a look to see how many stitches we need to complete to stitch this section here. So we have 27 stitches that we need to achieve in order to complete this line here. So we have stitched four 
of our bottom leg stitch. So I'm now going to continue to stitch our bottom leg until we get to 27. So I've now completed 10 bottom stitches and when you're stitching quite a lot of stitches in one colour it can be quite difficult to know how many stitches you have stitched in total. So one tip I'd like to share with you is for every 10th stitch that you stitch place your top stitch on top of the 10th stitch and that way that will really help you when counting along the line of stitches. So as you can see we have nine bottom stitches here and then on the 10th stitch that now indicates that that's my 10th stitch and that's really going to help me to determine when I look back how many stitches I've completed in total. So now that we've reached our 20th stitch I just want to double check the back and just make sure that everything looks as it should and there aren't any loose threads or anything so that if there was we could go back and make sure that everything was secure and in place. So we've now reached our 20th stitch and as you can see we have continued to have our bottom stitch running the same direction. So we've now got seven more stitches to add in our bottom leg and then once we have got reached our 27th stitch we're then going to make our way back adding the top stitch of our cross stitches. So one thing that can happen when cross stitching is that your thread can start to twist. So when that happens, one method that I like to use is I just like to run my needle down the thread and this really helps to take out the twisted threads. As I run my finger over the thread, you can now see that that has now made it run nice and flat on the thread. Another method you could use is you can take your needle off your thread and you can actually separate the threads. So you can separate them as well and then re-thread your thread. And then another method to help avoid this is the railroad method. The railroad method is something where when you push your needle into the bottom right, instead of going directly into the bottom right corner of the square, you place your needle in between the threads and then push down into the square. You can see that my needle has gone in between the two threads and has been pushed down into the square. And what this does is it allows your threads to lay separate and flat on the fabric. So this is a really good method to get used to because it really does make those stitches look neat. So if I do that again, I'm going to separate the two strands. I'm then going to push my needle into the bottom right of the square and then I'm going to pull the thread through. And that really does help to lay your thread nice and flat on the fabric. So we have now reached our 27th stitch, so I'm now going to go back over all the stitches from the top right to the bottom left to add that top stitch, making the stitches a full cross stitch. Okay, so there we have our 27 stitches all in place, so now what we need to do is we need to end our thread. So we're going to do the same as what we did on the first one, we're going to run our thread, our needle, in the back of a couple of the stitches that we have in place. So I tend to do about four or five and then pull the thread through, take the scissors and cut the thread. So there we have the back and there we have the front. So I don't have much thread left so I'm going to remove the thread that I have and I'm going to get a new thread ready to start 
our next section. So I'm now going to use my needle minder to look after my needle whilst I pull out my next strand. Now because I'm stitching in hand and have quite weak wrists, I like to have my needle minder on my bag instead of my fabric when I'm holding it in place. So the needle minder can sit on your fabric, so you could have it placed on your fabric if you wanted to. But I like to have it on my bag. So I like to have my bag next to me whilst I'm stitching and then whenever I need to place my needle down or put my needle down, I can put it on my needle minder, which is on my bag. Okay, so I'm now ready to continue with our stitching and we now need to stitch this next section here. So there is this letter in between the two lines, but we're going to be stitching this in part three. So we need to make sure that we count over it. So there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight squares until we get to our ninth stitch. So very similar to here, there are eight stitches in between each section. So now that we have our bottom stitch in place, I'm now going to just double check that I have left eight squares in between this section and my bottom thread that I've just put in. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're in the right place and you can count as many times as you feel comfortable as it's always good to make sure that you have it in the right place so that you continue to stitch. So before we continue on with our stitching, we need to check how many stitches we need to achieve in order to accomplish this top stitch. So each of the boxes are made up of 10 squares across and 10 squares going vertically. So from this line here to this line, there are 10 squares across. So if we start from this line here, you can see there are two empty squares and then the rest are completed with the symbol. So there are eight squares or eight stitches in total to make this line. Then we have 10, so we're now on 18, 28, 38, 48, 58 plus one equals 59. So there are 59 stitches we need to accomplish across our bookmark to get to the end of our bookmark. So I'm going to pick my bookmark back up and I'm going to complete the 59 stitches. And there we have our first set of stitches at the top of our bookmark. So our next colour is going to be this symbol. So if we take our DMC colour key, we are looking for this symbol, so we need this blue colour. So we're going to start stitching with this gorgeous royal blue colour and we're going to take a strand and we're going to stitch our next line. So we're going to count one empty square down from the plum colour stitch, then we're going to stitch our blue. So we're going to count one down and then we're going to stitch our blue. We have now completed our blue section of the pattern and in the next part we are going to be focusing on the wording and this section I am going to stitch all of these lines here ready for us to move on to the wording. So if you want to stitch along with me then you just need to stitch these lines here ready for part three and then we'll be ready to move on to the wording. So whilst you are stitching this bookmark, we would love to see your progress. And as you can see in this important information here, Sally has a hashtag which you can use to share your progress. And there is also a dedicated Facebook group where you can share your progress and other stitchers who are part of the group can see your progress. So we would love to see your stitching as well.
So that concludes part two of the cross stitching school. If you have been stitching with us here today, then we really hope that you have found this video useful. But if you do have any questions or any queries, then make sure to leave a comment down below as we are here to help. Part three, we will be stitching the letters and we'll also be talking about how to travel around the design and also we'll be looking at some cross stitching frames that will help you in future projects. If you are enjoying this cross stitching school, then make sure to give this video a like. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in two weeks.